was a dark and stormy night Nor'easter rolling in It's a long twelve hours The power's out again I pray for inner strength And that we don't lose no lives Just another day in the first responder's eyes Half a cup of coffee's gone The first run comes in A car slid off the road There's a family trapped within My heart beats like a hammer I can barely catch my breath I'm thinking the worst and hoping for the best Yeah, we ain't superheroes, we're just ordinary people Trying to make a difference and the first on every scene It's a heavy, heavy burden to carry all this burden When you can't unsee the things you've seen Sirens are gone Now my shift is finally over I gotta deal with what's mine And try to find a way To leave those tragedies behind So I hug my two children A kiss on my wife Just another day The first responder's life Yeah, we ain't superheroes We're just ordinary people Trying to make a difference And the first on every scene It's a heavy, heavy burden To carry all this burden When you can't unsee The things you've seen It keeps going on When those sirens are gone Flashing lights fill the air Broken bodies everywhere Another bad dream Is stealing Trying to make a difference And the first on every scene And it's a heavy, heavy burden To carry all this hurting When you can't unsee The things you've seen It keeps going on When those sirens are gone Hey, welcome to the award-winning Mad Radio Show with John and Sam, your first responder network, uh, bringing to you uh, post-traumatic stress awareness and resources to help you get through your day. Welcome, Sam. How are you? Hey, John, doing great. It's uh, almost that yummy turkey day. There you go. There you go. And it's time to uh, really um, be thankful for the things that we have and what we had throughout the year. This has been a very big weekend for us. It has been a very big, uh, I would say, last, what, three weeks now? At least since the begin beginning of the month, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, lots of lots of stuff uh, going on. Lots to be thankful for, and th this is what the this is what the show is about. I mean, you know, the the whole team at a badge of honor. What we've done here on Mad Radio, we have a lot to be grateful for. We have so much to be thankful for, and um, I, I just want to go over to the comment stream. So. Uh, hey, Judy, happy Thanksgiving. So the comment stream, I'm opening up right now. 
And all through the show, we want to hear from you about what you're grateful for or what you're thankful for, because uh, tis the season. <laughs> tis the season. Um, but you know, when you, when John, you and I were talking before the show, when, when you're in a space, not only a leadership space with what we do through a badge of honor and, and the resources we bring here uh, on Mad Radio, when you're in a leadership space, it, you have to be, you have to have the awareness and the presence of mind to figure out what you need in order to do what you do well. Okay. Right. So, let, you know, all first responders in my book, you know, they're leaders. Okay. You're either in charge of you, you're in charge of a unit. So by default, you're, you're a leader. And, um, it's so easy, I think, for people to go immediately to the negative, to forget what, that they're in the space that they are because that's where they're meant to be. Like that's where their service lies. That's their that's their best them. That's you know, you're right. doing you're your best you. Um well that's all you know. And, that's sometimes it's, sometimes it's all you know. You know, yeah, especially, yeah, in that leadership role, that's, you know, that's, that's, um, that's sometimes what keeps us grounded, but we got to sometimes sit back. And like you said, we got to sit back and go, are we okay? Uh, personally, are we okay? Because if we are not okay, um, we can put other people in jeopardy. We yeah. can't let our, e we can't let our egos, um, get in front of us on this. You know, think about a, a SWAT officer who um, is battling or is having some issues, right? And then he's got to lead his crew into a tough situation. He's really not, he doesn't have his head on straight. He's not thinking correctly. Things could go wrong. Things could go wrong. And that you have to be at the top of your game. So uh, when you talk about leadership, that that is a key, key uh, um, component of being able to make sure that not only you are safe, that everybody around you is safe. Yeah, and and it's it is the humility that I mean you you know for a long time and everybody that knows me I'm a huge Jocko Willink fan and um, one of the huge traits of, of leaders is, is is that humility piece and how easy it is to let our ego run us and. Yeah. You know, frankly, that's part of uh, it's not it's not like the whole thing around the stigma, but it's it's putting everybody else ahead of you all the time. It's the inability to say no. It's the refusing the self-care. It's only hanging out with, uh, you know, your first responder friends at the expense of your family or you know, it's always at an expense of something. Right. You, you, you are, you are led where you, where you are right now by certain happenstances or circumstances that brought you there. But I mean, I always look back and it's like, how did the people that I worked with or that mentored me, you know, how can I, how can I say thank you to them and just express my gratitude for, getting me where I am now. And, and you know that, you know, my therapist way back when now it's like, it feels like it's ancient history, 2002, 2003, you know, had, had, had a little bit of, uh, uh, of a check-in after moving here, um, back in 2013. Um, but that is that it, truly, I, I mean, it, it was her, it, it, it was so many, so many people have come through my life that has, that they've given me so many more tools for my toolbox and really opened my eyes to different things. Cause you know, we can do this or we can, you know, do that. And yeah, we just, you know, that, that, that's what I'm, that's what I'm grateful for. I, yeah, I sent you a message earlier. <laughs> huh? Oh, 
when when yeah. you bring up when you bring up your the mental health toolbox, um, and this is what I want to really stress to everybody. Um, you know, you keep collecting tools, and you may not use those tools. You may not use any of the tools. You may use some one day, some another day, but always keep those tools uh, on hand because you never know what tool is going to come in handy for the way you feel. So keep filling up that toolbox. It's never, it's never, um, every resource, every, every, um, everything that you learn, uh, may come in handy one day when you're battling. Um, and that, that's, that's probably the most important thing. So let's talk about, you want to, you want to get into this weekend a little bit? What, uh, yeah, what transpired? Definitely. you know, yeah. we, uh, we did hashtag walk the bridge like we do the 22nd of every month. This this uh, Monday just passed was uh, a very an, emo an emotional one as um, we dedicated the bridge, the walk the bridge night to Sergeant Guy Helms of the Rowlett Police Department. Now, for those that do not know, because um, it's not a um, media worthy um, in some people's uh, eyes, but Guy took his life last last week well two weeks ago um mm -hmm. after 27 years of honorable and dedicated service to the the city of dallas and to the city of rowlett now a huge step was taken by the rowlett police chief by making this a line of duty injury he classified this as a line of duty injury because he knew that guy was battling he knew that the stresses and the traumas that he was facing were built up over the years um, from law enforcement, from the first responder field. Um, it's just like anything else. Uh, we get medical conditions. Firefighters get medical conditions, you know, um, and they get certain uh, cancers from uh, breathing in smoke or toxic fumes. Those are, those are um, deemed line of duty injuries. Uh, suicide is uh, one of those things that we are fighting for in certain instances that if you have been um, properly diagnosed and, you know, we, they, they, they know that you're battling and you've, you've reached out for help, you've reached out for help, but sometimes, you know, the demons do get the best of you. Those monsters can become pretty strong. But if, if um, you do lose your life, there is no reason that um, you should not be buried with honors. You should, your family should not be uh, denied the, the honorable um, farewell that they so deserve. And so, and, and so every first responder deserves. And we were talking about this the other night at the bridge is that, you know, there are officers out there who, who serve so proudly and so honorably throughout their careers and um, post-traumatic stress injury gets the better, better of them and they lose their, and they, and they end up taking their lives and many departments across the nation end up sweeping that under the rug or they do not allow uh, the members to go in uniform or they're not given a proper burial. It's only, it, you know, so if you're a 20 year veteran, if you're a 10 year veteran, five year, whatever you serve, all your honorable service gets pushed aside and, and, um, and forgotten about that. We want to change because it means a lot to the family. We know we battle, we know we have our issues um, but it shouldn't be in the matter of the way we died. It should be the matter of the way we lived, like we always say. And by, uh, the Rowlett police chief, um, Godfrey made that classification change from, uh, a suicide to a line of duty, uh, death brought so much, um, to the table. I mean, he pushed. He really, he really caught, he's going to cause a good ripple effect across the nation as other departments see this. But I didn't get to make the funeral because I was working that day, but I saw the pictures. Um, and it is such an honor for the family to be able to place their, their spouse um, in a resting place surrounded by the job that he loved. Absolutely. You know? um, I mean, the state may not be given benefits, but you know what? Yet, but uh, to be able to have those flags flown, um, to be able to get the salute—I mean, yes, that person's gone, but 
believe me, it means more to the family to see the brothers and sisters and to see that uh, this man has served or this woman has served honorably and uh, is respected by the brothers and sisters of their first responder units. Yeah. Well, I think, I think, uh, you know, this happened on guy Pat guy passed on the 11th and then we were going right into a workshop here locally. So right. everybody, uh, was, you know, every emotion that you can imagine, uh, was experienced. You know, we came together, our workshop was on, unlike all those in the past because it was, it, it, there was a mission that came from a different place, a much deeper place. And I think with all of the departments involved in that, with everything coming out, uh, not only on social media and let, frankly, let's just say what it was pressure. Okay. Because part of the emotion that a lot of us felt was anger. We were pissed off, you right. know, Yep. And yep. Um, that that was felt not only, you know, of, of the uh, the command at the police department, but also at the with the city council, you know, because yep. they're responsible for having the contracts in place. And and it um, it culminated in the end of that day, that Friday that we we're doing our workshop that. Um, 12 found out and delivered the incredible news. And, you know, the, the one thing that has been since co all this COVID stuff started has been a constant. The more pressure you bring to the powers that be, whatever they are, the more outward pressure, the more you bring, you know, the lack of freedom or, or, you know, something that they're doing that's affecting you, your family, whatever it is, the more pressure you bring, the more that, Hey, social media is great. Right. The more you put it hey. out there, it does, it does, it does work. And I think, um, first of all, morally, he knew what, what was the right thing to do. And I think across, across the United States, any chief who has an officer that completes suicide morally, I think they know that that classifying that as a line of duty death is the right thing to do. This gets in the way and other people t uh, with money, right? With well, finances. Well, that's just it too. You know, Chief Godfrey was with us in the very beginning uh, when it, when we started the hashtag walk the bridge and we started building the park. He, he's a huge supporter on the mental health road to recovery um i know there are at certain points um within the political powers in the police department even as a chief you don't have all the the power of say so on on issues like this and that's why i commend him uh tremendously for taking a huge step being bold and saying no this is how it's going to be and, and move and moving that that stigma line and saying no we are we are going past this and we're, we're going to do it because Believe it or not, there are so many chiefs out there that um, probably morally want to do it, but don't have the bravery or the courage or the backbone to say, no, we are going to do this. We are going to classify it and we're going to make that change. So, yeah. I mean, he, he, he really, he really um, broke ground. You know, when you think of a sledgehammer cracking mm -hmm. that big block of stigma, he really put a giant crack in that stigma block by doing what he did. And um, I think, Rowlett, I think Rockwall and the surrounding communities that now hear about this will um, will look deeper into their mental health programs and say, hey, listen, we don't want to make this step. We don't want to have to classify this. We don't want to lose an officer. So right. what are our preventive, preventative measures to not have someone lost? Like you would say that all our uh, at our workshops, you know, we're Law enforcement is given the best of tools um, for street taxes, survival, uh, de-escalation tools. We're given all these tools to help us help others, but we're never given the tools to help ourselves. Right. And um, that's what we have. To, and, you know, and I love what you say. You know, we got to be you know, we got to take that mental health budget line and move it above the janitor's box and, and really yeah. put the, put the front digits. 
Yeah, the paper clips, yeah, right? The paper clips, you know, yeah. Um, you know, our mental health is worth a lot more than uh, a box of paper clips. So, uh, and I think I think slowly um, we are we are getting there. Um, it, you know, I'm impatient. I, I would like things to happen a lot faster, but it, these are big hurdles. Um, we, we're changing a culture. We're changing, um, you know, the way it's been for hundred a hundred years in policing. So, um, but we have come a long way. Uh, the new generation of police officers are more adapt to, I think, seek help and 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 find their way. But we got to remember that the new generation of police officers out there too are. Um, I don't want to use the word soft. Um, but it's a little diff- bit more, it's a different time. It's a yeah, different time. They're a, bit, they're a little bit more compassionate. But they they um they have to. Uh... Are you are they... you flicking a Zippo lighter or something? No, I'm hitting my ring up against this. I'm oh, sorry. okay. I was like, what? I, I apologize. Um, That's okay. No, uh, the 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 new generation of uh, police officers, um, really, as they are willing to ask for help and 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 heal, um a lot more things bother them out on a street. You know, back in, in my day, you know, a crackhead or anybody else gets killed or thrown off a roof or, you know, it was like, Pfft. yep, you know, it, it didn't really, it didn't resonate with us as much as now one of these young young kids sees a dead body. It may resonate a little differently with them because uh, they have a little bit more empathy and a little bit more compassion than we did back then. Well, is that called, is that, that's our humanness, right? Yeah, no, no, yeah, 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 yeah. So you have to, you have to have that empathy and compassion with yourself, and and, and kind of allow that in. Hey, I, I totally get you. Um, you know, being the only female in my graduating class uh, with the Secret Service, there was no owl. You know, <laughs> I had, I had one major owl thrown around a mat room, and my back just went boom. Um, but uh, you know, but other than other than really that, but. Um, yeah, you know, I I had the chance to um, talk to Chief Godfrey one on one for for a little bit. Um, shout out to the Veterans Resource and Outreach Center in Rowlett. Uh, you know, it they have they have really brought the community together to continue this conversation to be a catalyst, uh, not only to remember Ocho and uh, do that incredible service for him but now uh you know what they did what you know what you all did at uh walk the bridge um for guy and bringing in the cit teams uh closing the doors to the public so that and the rockwall p uh, the uh, sorry the rowlet pd could come in could uh get the help that they needed could talk to their brothers and sisters and just like get it out um I got a chance to talk to him and, and, uh, I, Hey, I'm putting it out there. We, we have this show. I'm just going to say he's, I, I, I did the exact same thing that you said, you said, um, with the moral, the courage, you know, thanking him, pointing out that, you know, this, is, this was a courageous act that he did his words, but for the job, we would have never been in this position. Right. Okay. That and is, it- that that is like okay, folks. The the peel the the outer onion. All we've gone through the layers. We've opened the curtains. We've removed the blinders. Whatever analogy you want to throw in there. That is a one hundred percent true statement, and that is why suicide should be a line of duty. That period. End, end of end of story. But for the job. We wouldn't be in this position. Right. And, you know, if you look at, I think it was about four or five years ago, um, a short four or five years ago, uh, uh, Sharonda, who's part of our team, part of the Blue Help team, um, lost her husband uh, to suicide in Dallas. Uh, He was a Dallas sheriff. And back then, uh, and the current, who is now still the current sheriff, um, made the statement that nobody can go to the funeral in uniform 
that, uh, you know, and I feel bad for Sharana. She wasn't given that closure with the department. And, um, you know, I'm going to call call out the Dallas, Dallas Sheriff on our show because uh, I know Brian 12 from the V Rock had reached out to her numerous times prior to Walk the Bridge, um, wanted to place this discussion with her about what um, Chief Godfrey did. Um, hopefully, that we could start that conversation within the Dallas County Sheriff's Department to um, start seeing if we can um, educate them more on the mental health and goose egg no phone calls yeah. back after numerous emails phone calls and everything else and you know i made i made a phone call actually i made and a, Rowlett is in dallas county by the way right and, so, and you know and he, here's the differences yeah. and ju and just just 20 miles away in tarrant county you know i'm i gave one text to the sheriff of Tar tarrant county and within 10 i got a response back um uh, what can I do? How can I help? Um, you know, you see the difference in the mental health, uh, the, men the way mental health plays in somebody's mind. You know, we got two sheriffs on two different spectrums when it comes to mental health. You know, I reached out to uh, Rob Keichler, one of the Texas police commissioners, and boom, within five minutes, text me back. Uh, I'm there for the family. I'm there. I support Chief Godfrey in whatever he wants to do. He came to the bridge uh, on on Monday to shake Godfrey's hand and and congratulate him and say thank you, sir, for for being courageous enough to do this. Um, so we have to change the minds of those in charge um, to not fear what other people are going to think about it. You know, and I think that's right. what happens is a lot of people fear that oh my God, if I if you know, because suicide has a stigma to it, no matter where you where be it on the job or off. Uh, you got the religious groups that uh that um feel, hey, you're gonna go to hell, you know, and you can go through the Bible front to back, and it does not say it anywhere that if you take your life, you're going to hell. And um and the only reason I know that is because I spoke with Chris Kazar yesterday, and his brother is in the ministry, and he read the whole book. He read the book cover to cover, you know, so he knows. Um, uh, but that, you know, and that's, you know, you, you're going to go where your faith puts you, not, not on the matter of your death. So, um, I think a lot of people are scared to make, uh, a, a, a decision on this. And I think it's hurting a lot of our officers and their families. Oh, it's definitely, it's definitely to their detriment for sure. So we, yeah. we threw out a lot of names there. So Yes. Yeah, so John and I, you know, we are so grateful for hashtag walk the bridge. If you guys are not familiar with what that is, walkthebridge.org. You can, I'll, I'll put it on the comment stream. Uh, come out, uh, join us the 22nd of, of every month. Um, we, we talked about, um, you know, the Tarrant County Sheriff, Sheriff Wayborn, Stand up guy. Thank you, Sheriff Wayborn. We are so grateful uh, to him and the men and women in his department who, yes. you know, like openly talk about stuff um, all the time, who come out to events um, to show their support. Um, uh, Rob Keichler, one of the uh, police commissioners. Absolutely. He is a huge advocate. And, uh, it, you know, it's it's. We we realize, meaning me, John, Walk the Bridge, uh, Heroes Memorial Park Foundation, we uh, you know the Rowlett PD. We've got a big job ahead of us, a big big job. And losing guy, I personally didn't know him, but everybody that I've spoken to about him, I could see how he impacted their lives and hearing the stories. See, this, this guy, this guy was incredible. Okay. Yeah. So, he was a mentor so to a lot of people. Yeah. So when you lose somebody of the, I'll just say of this stature of this, who truly gave every ounce of his being, his soul, it's, it's got, it, it drives me to just do better. 
Right. Like every day, what can I do to, to make a difference? <laughs> Just you no, name you, the you're right. Show making a difference for, for a reason. What can we do? So, hey, maybe that's a challenge for we're coming into the holiday season. Um, you know what? That's a great question. You know, what can we all do every day when we wake up? It's an opportunity to make a difference in somebody else's lot life. And if that difference needs to be for you, like you are recognizing that something that things are not a hundred percent or you want to change something, it's okay to do it for you. It's not selfish. Yeah. It's the, 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 the that, most, and, and that's the hard part. That's the right. hard part. The if, once you get, a, once you yeah. get over that and you said yeah. it's selfishness, cause we all feel that we, we have to be there. We have to say yes. Oh, it's okay. You know, uh, we are allowed to take time for ourselves. And a lot of guys and a lot of a lot of uh, first responders are so, um, you know, so conditioned to serving others, we forget to serve ourselves. And mm -hmm. it's okay. You're allowed. It's it's recommended. <laughs> you take yeah. a you know take time for yourself and your family, and and um, you know, serving is great, but we can't serve unless we serve ourselves. Yeah, and and one of the things that you know, we've definitely talked about on the show uh, a lot is, you know, when the, when bad stuff happens, um, you know, all we, all, all we know how to do is first responders. Like, let me just work. If I stay busy, it'll all be good. And we all know what that means. It's like, you can't stay busy forever. You have to take time to eat. You have to take time to sleep. You have to, if you, you know, you're with your family, you have to take time to be with your family. And when you understand how your filing cabinet is filled with all of the incidences where you said, all I have to do is keep working and it'll be okay. You, you, file, you file what happened away. Right. That it, you, you, it doesn't get turned off. That's not the way that, that the brain works. And then you're trying to take, take, oh, the bad dreams. Oh, you know, the, the extra drinks that you're having and you're trying to put them in, that in the filing cabinet. Let me just stay busy, stay busy, stay busy, stay busy until you just don't even have a clue what's going on around you. And as Jeff talks about, it's like, okay, divorce. Oh, oh, my wife did, or my spouse just served me with papers. I didn't see it coming. Right. Because work, 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 stay busy, stay busy. I can get through this. I can get through this. What about all the people you're leaving behind? Right. They, 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 they're not with you on that same journey. And yeah. It's easy to forget. It's, e it's so, it's so easy to forget. Um, and you, me and you both have both been there. Um, I know our families, our spouses have felt it, um, but you know, and that, and that's, like I said, that's why we do what we do to remind people to raise that awareness, to remind people to take that extra moment in time to be thankful for the support that you have, the people that are standing next to you that aren't part of that. So we can't forget them because before we know it, we're going to be alone. There's going to be nobody there, and um, we're going to be like, well, what happened? And that then it's just it's just a deeper dig into the the rabbit hole. <laughs> yes. So. Gratitude, uh, huge, huge gratitude and, uh, and just bless blessings to, uh, all of our first responder families out there. Um, your first responder can't do what they do without your support. And, uh, you know, if you need, if you need help to start conversations and stuff like that, um, guys, if you haven't checked out our website lately, which, uh, I'll just throw it up there um right now again right. talking and clicking you know doesn't work for me all the time. <laughs> there we go uh it, it we have expanded uh our partners um to not only include local resources uh we just added some from east texas but if you're a family member you can you'll see on there uh married with ptsd that's yep. all about yep. being married to a first responder. We've got 
Meg and Eric, Meg's law enforcement, Eric's firefighter, how they navigate it. Wonderful site. Um, you don't have to do this alone. You know, Dr. T with first. Um, yep. to, so an, more gratitude to all of our partners. Uh, our newest partner, Kimberly Parker, Forged in Valor. Again, she works with families. Um, Shahidra, uh, uh, Cogill at, uh, I always mess it up, the FFC Center, the, the logos on there. And and folks, all you, you literally have to do, visit the site, click on the resource, boom, you're on the website. Yep. Couldn't, couldn't be easier. So a huge shout out to all of our partners. Um, we are so grateful for the partnership. Uh, super grateful for you just stepping forward and embracing first responder, the culture and uh, allowing them to come in and kind of just let loose and get the help that they need and, and with their, their families as well. Um, yeah. Speaking about families, for. speaking about families, I just want to bring, bring what you said about uh, married with PTSD uh, to the forefront, Meg and Eric, you know, uh, they're a couple like everybody else. You know, they're they're they don't have the PhD on the back of their name. They are genuine. Uh, they're a genuine married couple that goes through not only the the post traumatic stress issues, but they they battle the same as every other couple: financial. You know, who didn't clean the dishes? Who left the seat up? All that stuff. You know, that plays it. Well, really we know who left the seat up. It wasn't the dog. <laughs> but, that, that, that kind of plays into it. And, you know, Meg and Eric are both so approachable that if you if you go onto their website and you email Meg or you email Eric and say, hey, listen, can we chat for a little bit? Man, I bet you within, within 24 hours, you're going to be in a conversation that you're going to love and you're going to be like, wow, I feel the same way. And it's going to be a healing experience. Two of the most wonderful people in the world. I mean, and that's free counseling just to talk to them. They are so mm -hmm. open about their relationship and they're so willing to uh, help others heal that, you know, be it, be it if you're in the West Coast or East Coast or Midwest or wherever you are, you can get in contact with them. You can do a Zoom call. And like I said, those are those are the resources that we've vetted and uh, stand behind 100 percent. They are the healing people uh, that for for relationships. Yeah, so so um, let's just like do a Q and A on ourselves. So I'll I'll ask you what uh, we've talked about so much, but what what for you has been like the biggest uh, learning point or tool that you've picked up? Uh, you know, this year I picked up a lot of tools, and I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I'm like every other first responder. I, you know, I give great advice. And, you know, I was taught, it's funny. It's funny you should say that. Last week when we had um, uh, Karen on, right? Uh, no, uh, Kimberly. No, no. Kimberly. When we had Kimberly on. Um, Tyra heard me speaking. And we were talking about relationships and a whole bit. And after the show, she came up to me. She goes, she goes um, why don't you ever open up to me like that? And I'm like, I don't know. I just don't know. I don't know why I don't open up to you like that. Um, I'm very good at opening up to other people. I'm very good to uh, giving advice to other people, but real hard for me to open up, I guess, in a family unit. But I'm learning. I'm trying, right? And some of the tools that I learned throughout our workshops <laughs> with John Edmondson and breathing techniques help a lot. But I see even us who do these workshops, who who study it, who who you know preach it we we still battle we still have the same issues as everybody else um but we're getting through them i mean we're here today trying to pass that along that you know we're not healed by no means uh we have changed uh post-traumatic stress injury has changed us forever um not saying it will ever heal because it's changed our mental mindset and we have to work at it it, it is it is a battle it is um it is uh it is a climb, but you know what? It's a climb that's worth climbing. So my tools that I've learned is to, to be able to open up a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. and John and um, John Edmondson really has done a lot for me. Uh, 
my anger issues are um, are quelling down a little bit. You know, uh, I don't get. I mean, I still get uh, angry at times, but um, you know, I'm trying to remember those breathing techniques. So it's it's muscle memory, like you always say, Sam. It's muscle memory. You got to work at them every day. You got to practice them. It's nothing that's going to come natural because it's out of it's really out of our uh, comfort zone. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's like um, typing and talking. It's like typing and talking, which I'm trying to do now. Uh, How about it's, you? Um, How about yeah, you? Um, yeah, for for me, it's a little bit of what you what you just touched on, um, allowing other people in to be part of this crazy journey. Um, asking asking for help for asking for help for the little things. Like, I, I just think that like you, it's like, we can just fix it and we can just do it. But, it, but it's like, Hey, could you fold the laundry for me? Or, Hey, could you make this phone call for me? Or, Hey, we need a cotton candy machine. <laughs> can you go find one? Or, Hey, we need volunteers. And, and just not, not trying to take, <laughs> everything on because john you know you know since 2003 i've been built i've had my toolbox thrown so many more tools in that that i've learned not only from uh you know reading different things but doing online stuff because i just i just eat it up i'm a voracious right. learner and uh yeah you can be a voracious learner i went to law school talk about ah, you know <laughs> yeah i took a break from books for a little while but then i got back into it you got, you have to, you have to be open to learning. Um, yes. and then you have to be opening, open to practice what you learn, because if you just throw it in the toolbox, it's just going to get rusty. Right. So, I mean, for me, I, I feel like I have my recipe, um, my, my head recipe down. Um, I, I know, uh, the awareness piece. I can, I can tell you a hundred percent if I do not get adequate sleep, this starts going in places that are really ugly. Um, I have a very, uh, my frustration quotient is like insane. I have a very, it goes very, very low. I have no room. It's like my plate is over full already. Um, uh, almost like I can't, I have no space to breathe. And John Edmondson, you know, those breathing techniques, uh, even the visuals. I think I have, um, yeah, the visuals yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, he, that he gave oh, us. So I think I have it, mine, but I think my grandkids took it. <laughs> oh, they, well, well, it is a, I, I forgot the technical t term for it, the toy, but yeah. Um, just utilize, utilizing this. Um, the, the focal point, uh, right. when I breathe, um, if I, if I choose not to have my eyes closed for whatever reason, um, you know, having this focal point concentrating on my, my breath, um, it, it, it's just a continued process of bringing more alongside. I, I have a, I have a new book. Um, let me, let me grab this. <laughs> I, I'm all about, I'm all about, you know, like top performers. So, uh, the Ranger oh, way. Oh, uh, is that I the got, uh, workshop you just went to? Yep. I got to meet Chris, um, and train with, um, his amazing staff at battle line tactical. Uh, no, it, we were not in the headspace. Uh, it was all literally tactical, not, uh, bladed, uh, weapons, uh, firearms, um, we even did uh, a um, stop the bleed first aid. Uh, we went through scenarios, you know, how to deal with gunshot wounds, chest wounds, and stuff. And and uh, I, I mean, you and I were trained at the highest levels, even in first aid. You know, it wasn't your right. your basic life saving. Um, and that's all changed. You know, it, it, it things seem to evolve every five years. So now. You know, they used to show you how to make the the chest uh, 
um, dressing, right? So sucking chest wounds, you get sucking shot. Sucking chest wounds? Yeah. Put the plastic so, on know, her and let it out, breathe? Yeah, exactly. So now it's, you you can get all the tools you need. You put them in a bag, peel, stick, d done. And then you got to remember to check the back for an exit wound. So um, we didn't have that, <laughs> you know? Right, you no, really no. Create creating things out of your bag, right? Now yep. it's all done. You and uh um yeah, so uh but th this is the kind of stuff allowing allowing people that have been and gone before you because I have never been uh I don't know if you guys can read this. So so Chris, this is Ben Kazi <laughs> right here. Okay, if you've seen the movie 13 hours, this this is the guy. Okay. Um, he is the most down to earth, all of his training staff, uh, humble guys. I, I said, you know, I'm training with guys that are five, six, five, seven, I think tall, five, eight. And there were only two, two tall guys. And you think mm -hmm. about when you watch these movies, um, you know, they're not these superhero six foot four uh that everybody thinks of when you speak when you think of a special forces guy right um and it's and all so, in the training. it's all in the training and the tech right it's all it's all their toolbox and the yeah. mindset and the mindset because Huge. right and you know you could have a guy who's five five and have a great mental mindset on tactics and really outdo somebody who's six six um who mm -hmm. you know is not in, in that headspace and 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 you know yeah. Ends up screwing up the whole thing. Yeah. So I, I, I mean, it's, it's, it is that, that, that is it for me is, is really allowing more to come in and allowing people to walk with me when I need somebody to walk with me. Um, yeah. That, that, you know, yeah. Agreed. That, that's Agreed. the biggest thing. So, and to definitely well. hug my puppies a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, if you notice, like, since you brought up the book, I'm going to bring up whoop, this way, this this way. Uh, it's, yeah. Yeah, the stigma stops here. I want to give a big shout out to Karen Solomon and Blue Help for uh, the the huge steps Blue Help has gone, and now it's First Help. Uh, you know, they they went from just a, a database collection on statistics for police officers uh, who who have taken their lives to now first responders. Uh, across the board and we are now seeing numbers and if you go on to the blue help website you'll be astonished on uh i think we're up to last week we're at like 127 and now we're up to 130 132 i don't remember the exact number but we just had a suicide in um in new york city that you really you know it made a little yeah. blurb and that and that was it but um if you look at the the firefighters and the paramedics around our country, our, our heroes are taking their lives, and that shouldn't make you mad enough to stand up and go to your go to your legislation, go to your your local town board, and say, "Hey, what kind of mental health plan do we have in place for our first responders? Is it is it a smoke and mirror plan, or is it a, a legit plan of action to take care of our people?" Uh, and Blue Help has uh, really moved the uh, um, moved the line again, just like Godfrey did. Move that line and said, "Hey, listen, we are going to take we are going to continue to take steps forward to make sure that our uh, we we smash this stigma, we stop it, we'll listen, we'll 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 learn, and we will proceed, and we'll save lives." So, uh, yeah. big shout out to yeah. Blue Help as well. Yeah, we're we're absolutely grateful for you, and um, you know I think I I I know you'll agree with me because we'd be remiss to to not mention the Garland Police Department and specifically Todd Jerry, yeah, um, who's uh, the brain health liaison uh, over there. That's what that's what that's where we got that term. Um, not only through uh, what we experienced with Guy. And his ability to just go, hey, and then have a room full of folks uh, ready, willing, and able to help. Um, but all of 
the, the way that, that our partnership formed and the way that he has uh, embraced, um, you know, a badge of honor, embraced us, uh, allowed us to come into the, the department. And I'll speak for myself. It is, it is every time we're over there, I, I feel like we are surrounded by a place that is just so caring and is so into we want to make this department and give our folks the best opportunities that they can have to perform at their best, both at home and on the job. It, it's the full package. It's the full deal. And Todd, you probably don't get uh, enough kudos. So we are so grateful for you, for your partnership, um, and and all of the all of the friends. I mean, GPD is like a, a family. Yeah. Um, you can pick up the phone whenever, and 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 everybody out there, Matt and Christian, aka Tank, and uh, just everybody. You it, know, it, it really is. You bring up Garland. And on the on the other side of the spectrum, you know, we met another police department that was just like Garland, uh, which was mm -hmm. Grand Prairie. You know, uh, mm -hmm. Christina retired. Uh, now she's retired. Christina Martinez, uh, one star, chief, one of the assistant chiefs over there and the chief really took mental health to a new level within that department. And what was nice to see when we went and did the Collin County Mental Health Symposium, uh, I got to meet two of uh, the Grand Prairie officers that were sent there um and they uh really amplified that grand prairie is still taking you know still being the um one of the leaders on this side of the metroplex of mental health and it's glad to see that even though christina left um that that ball is still moving forward and that their officers are taking things uh seriously and the chief yeah. is taking things seriously and they have a great mental health plan in place. So I'd like to, you know, when you want to, you know, if you're a department out there and you want a program to be put in place or em or emulate a program, go to either Garland or go to Grand Prairie because these are two exceptional, exceptional departments. I mean, we went out to Lindale uh, out in East Texas as well. Lindale is amazing. Um, and they're, they're just starting their program, but, they have the, a great attitude towards uh, the performance that they want to put into their department and their guys. So north, south, and north, south, and east so far. We haven't we haven't gone west yet. We're going to get there though. Uh, we, but north, we will. South, we will get there. We yes, will we get will. there. But north, south, and uh, east. Um, those are three tremendous departments: Lindale, Grand Prairie, and Garland, that are really uh, have fantastic programs in yeah. place for their officers and how small of a world it, it, we say this all the time how small of a world is it okay so here we are john moved to, to texas before <laughs> i did it, what, what year 2008 2008 okay so i came in 13 we uh we worked the you know we were both at 9 11 different places had different uh responder jobs there we go out to Lindale PD, uh, one of their command staff, retired FBI, who was also 9-11, uh, worked the pile, worked fresh kills, putting together the evidence. Yep. And he knew one of the Secret Service agents that I work with and got him on the phone. I mean, he, who is now in Tyler. This Secret oh, Service wow. agent in, in New York is now in Tyler. I, I And he's a Jersey guy. And it's like... Who would have thought that this great state of Texas would bring all of us together? Right. In, and and just it's, it, it it it's really I, I, it's I mind boggling. Guess grateful for the state of Texas. It's mind boggling, though. You know, and we you know I was you know when we talk about paths cross for a reason, right? You know. If you look back, I mean, and th this is where I, my mind gets so crazy. You know, I got hurt on a job. I got stabbed on a job. I ended up retiring, you know, and then I, that kind of catapulted me to Texas. If I, if I never moved to Texas, 
Um, I would have never met you. I would have never met, met 12 and Mongo. And we wouldn't be joined together park and hashtag that this you know when you talk about the perfect storm and all these components coming together through a through separate networks but we all had that one thing in common we all we were all open enough to bring up that conversation and we all started talking and you know like that's i can't i can't stress that enough is open that you know open that door and have a conversation with somebody because you don't know where that's going to lead Two years down the line, or three years down the line. Look, I mean, one radio years show down the line, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. look, we we met, and look where we look how far we've yeah. come, just on a conversation that we had. Yeah, you know, that's uh, I think that's tr- tremendous, tremendous. I still, re- it's, I still it's remember. You. Yeah, I still remember your email, and I was like five eight eight five. Is that your badge number? <laughs> right. <laughs> So yeah, and yep. in your email, I'm not gonna put your uh, say what your email address is, but yeah, and, and it was it was like that was like uh, you knew that I knew like okay, this chick gets yep. what, what this she is gets it, on. she gets yeah. it, that's right. But I mean, like we, me and you met through twelve, right? N- no, you. I, well, I guess maybe twelve. You yeah. reached out to me on email, so I don't know right. how that. Right. So, I, yeah. like, I, I I met you through twelve. Twelve said, "Hey, I know a Secret Service agent who lives in our area who's in from nine eleven. Maybe you want to have her on your show." And then, you know, I met twelve after the tragedy of the seven seven to Dallas Dallas seven seven. We would the show this this show Mad Radio was at Stroker's covering the event and I met 12 and I met all those guys and we connected and I had them on the show and that, and it's just, it's weird how this all, all of us came to about and network and now we're just all a family and we are moving forward each and every day, all yeah. from one conversation, all from just one connection. And mm-hmm. like I said, it, it's mind boggling and I'm, I'm, I'm grateful. And I'm, you know, when you talk about Thanksgiving, um, I'm, thankful for being a part of your life and 12's life and Mongo's life and just our network, our, our family life and Jeff's life. I mean, I would have never met Jeff. I love Jeff, you know, as a brother, I love John Edmondson as a brother. I would have never been able to connect with them if we didn't have this conversation. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. Well, I, I certainly am grateful for you and, and our partnership and, and, uh, everything that we've done and what we continue to do and what we fight for and, and our families. And I mean, we do, we have a huge extended family uh, with a lot of people that are, are just all together on this mission to, to make this world a better place. And um, I, I'm also grateful for our mad radio uh, audience that tune yeah. in every week. I know it's a long Wednesday because, you know, these guys over there, 99% get to set it up and then we kind of close it out and uh, and uh, each week. And it, it's just a blessing to have all of you guys um, come into our world. This is, yeah. this is, we talk to people all over the world and we feel safe. So thank you for yes. allowing us to do that. And, um, you know, I, don't I, would, that? I don't remember if I would told you this, but here's another weird thing, you know, with a badge of honor, right? Uh-huh. In in 2002, before you moved here, before I moved here, right? Yeah. I don't know if you can see this. Uh, honors are fallen firefighters, right? This is, and partners. It says, part, the picture of this, my this picture here is partners, right? Okay. And it's not, and it's signed by Fred Stone, Right, badge of honor, Fred Stone. Wow! And that was back in two thousand. <laughs> it was meant to be, to to a bad. It was, he signed this. This was uh, plated badge of honor, Fred Stone and his partners. So that's it, it's almost creepy. <laughs> I know that's it. That it, it's at every moment. So it's the top of the hour. I got one more huge thank you because I'm I'm I've got my phone, you know, with the clock and everything. But somebody very special has been who I've known for a while has been 
working uh, for us to help us create uh, a logo that is like truly ours, you know? And uh, Rod Greg, I don't know if you're listening. I, I actually hope you're with Jackie and preparing Thanksgiving dinner because Rod is a fabulous cook, but I'm just going to stick this up here. And I don't know if you can see this, John. It's a little pixelated, but I love it. Can you see it? Oh, that's the IRS. Yeah. No. Can you see it? I don't it? want to so save me with the IRS. Tax season, tax season. So it says first responders. It's in the shape of the badge that we chose. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. It's got I the Texas, see, the Texas the star in the middle. Um, it says service above self, honor, service, sacrifice, uh, a badge of honor. And that's going to be the new logo. Yep. And um, uh, Rod, I, I mean, props. We are so grateful for you, for your incredible artwork, um, your, your patience. Um, and, I, you know, I've known Rod for a long time. We started doing Carry the Load together as a team. Um, and uh, he just continues to amaze. Uh, so I, I'm just going to put it put in here. Um, he's a retired, medically retired Garland uh, police officer. Uh, was seriously injured uh, in the line of duty a, uh, a while ago. Um, so he does all logos and graphic design. Yes. So if anybody is in the is in the need for logos, graphic design, everything, he does decals for the cars. Is the full full deal. Uh, Rod Greg, we are thankful for you. You know, it's really good on, when you got somebody in the business like that through graphic design and, and to come up with logos with so many departments and so many people and so many organizations coming out with challenge coins now to represent their department. You can go to him. He can draw you a, a perfect uh, logo for create a logo. Uh, yeah. to creative logo to um, make your challenge coin in and uh, send it into your uh, whatever, whoever's going to make yeah. your challenge coins. So. Yep. Kudos. All right. So Kudos. it's after eight. We, uh, yep. we it's like poof again this hour. Again, we want to thank you. Um, please, folks, uh, if you are in this area on December 11th, it is our first, very first ever fundraiser uh, hosted by the Veterans Resource and Outreach Center in Rowlett. You can go on the Mad Radio page. We shared the flyer all over. Come out with your families. If you're a first responder veteran, it's for you. If you're a supporter, come on out. Support those that protect and defend us every single day. They leave their egos at the door. They, they are out there proudly serving our communities. So let's show them all the love and support that they deserve. 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, and we've got everything, including pictures with Santa. Pictures. We are building a we are building a winter wonderland in um in the V Rock. It'll be yep. probably in the Marine Room uh, for some phenomenal first responder Santa pictures and veteran pictures. So uh, bring the kiddos. Um, and I know there are going to be some uh, presents maybe given out to the kids. Maybe, maybe, maybe we'll see. But I think well, Santa we'll have the sweets. That's for sure. Yes, and Santa will have yeah. you guys on on the good list. So, uh, come on out. It's going to be a good day to decompress and just spend time with the family. Absolutely. Um, and again, uh, you know, to to all of our first responders out there who selflessly put on that uniform every day, go out and serve our communities. Uh, we love you. We pray for you every day. Keep doing what you're doing because you have so many people that truly cherish you. Uh, don't be afraid to ask for help. Again, visit our website, abadgeofhonor.com, and uh, and uh, just click on the logo and make a phone call. That's it. Go. That's it. Reach out to me or, me or John. We're there. And uh, to our veterans, thank you. Thank you for serving wherever you serve to uh fight for freedom 
uh, across the world and for all of our active duty that are still fighting. Thank you for keeping our shores uh, safe. We hold you close in our hearts. Uh, for those that can't be with their families on Thanksgiving, uh, you know, th this show is for you. Um, think about as tough it is as it is being away from your family and doing the things that you love. There's always something to be grateful for. Uh, so I'm throwing that wish out to uh, to create a mindset about around gratitude and thankful, being thankful. John, take us home. Uh, you said it all, Sam. I want to just wish everybody, all our listeners, all our first responders, all our veterans, uh, a very happy, healthy, and safe um, Turkey Day. Um, don't forget, you know, stay thankful. And you know what? Thank somebody else because uh, you can brighten up their day. That's it. All right. Till next time, Thanks. everybody. Take care. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. All Happy right. Bye-bye. Good night, Sam. <laughs>